Welcome back to the show. Courtney, you ready to get things started? I definitely am. I hope so. Just looking at you for some reason, I don't know why. <laughs> My first guest tonight is starting his 14th season as the radio voice of the Thundering Herd. He's a seven-time winner of the West Virginia Sportscaster of the Year Award. Please welcome Steve Cotton. Steve, thanks for coming out. Oh, sure thing. This is Courtney. Hey. Courtney, Hi. nice to meet you. Jump on up here. All right. Have a seat. Now, I guess this might be just a, a little a little different being in front of the cameras. You're usually behind the microphone just on radio. You're not nervous or anything, are you? Uh, yeah, they usually keep my mug on the radio. And, uh, you know, my sister thinks it never gets old to say he has a perfect face for radio. Yeah, that's, that's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> now, you've been doing martial sports for more than a decade now. What, what stands out in your mind when you think back to all those games? The obvious moments in football that jump out. You had the 1999 Mid-American Conference Championship game when Marshall fell behind Western Michigan 23-3 uh, to and makes the big comeback and uh, wins it on the last play off well of four seconds left. Chad Pennington to Eric Pinkerton. and So much was on the line that game. You had a team that ended up by winning that and going on to beat Brigham Young in the Motor City Bowl, end up number 10 in the country. But back then in the Mid-American Conference, which at the time had only one bowl bid, if they lose that game, they don't even get to go to a bowl game. And so that was huge. Where is the mm -hmm. best place that, you had, that you've been that you got to call a game? Uh, basketball, you go to the FedEx Forum in Memphis, you got an NBA arena, everything's fabulous there. The amenities are everything you would hope for. Uh, and I don't know that there's a better basketball arena in the country. So, uh, you know, the last couple of years, the Conference USA Basketball Tournament's been there. So that's been a lot of fun. Football, I went to the University of Florida. I'm kind of partial to our 2001 game there at the Swamp. That oh, was uh, fun to go home for that one. And even though they've always been the enemy, the Tennessee Vols have quite a place there where you, been a, at Neyland Stadium a couple trips in Knoxville, and mm -hmm. I'd say 105,000 people, when that team runs out through the tee, you, you can feel it. Yeah, the hairs do stand up in the back you of your neck. So let's go, you know, we got to go good with the bad. Where's the worst place you've ever called a game? A easy, easy question. The yeah. Rubber Bowl in Akron. Explain it, that. What do we have there? It, a pit of a place to, to play ball. It, it just terrible facilities. The team didn't even have, uh, in the locker rooms, they don't even have a hook to hang their stuff on. You just pile it in the floor. That was the worst. Now, you're heard all over the nation on the ISP Thundering Herd Sports Network. I need to ask you a question. Do you get recognized more sitting in a restaurant or ordering it when you go through the drive-thru? Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that just a couple weeks ago. Uh oh true story. Yep, yep. Uh, going through the drive-thru, a little bit unnerving. I just place the order and, uh, you know, you're not even thinking about it. Start to drive on and go around. And the, I thought, did she just say, pull around, Steve? And I said, no. Nah. She said, pull around, please. And I pull up to the window and the lady's there just kind of smiling. She said, yeah, I recognize your voice. <laughs> and That's pretty good. I said, yeah, she did say Steve. <laughs> now, I, I got to ask you, you, you explained to me earlier about your work week. Can you explain to everyone what you typically do? Because you don't just show <laughs> up for a game just an hour before and just hope for the best, right? You don't do that, do you? Yeah, like apparently you do here. <laughs> oh, Steve, 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 thanks for coming on the show, yeah, well, first and last. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now just tell them real quick how things, how things work out. It is a kind of all week thing to prepare, especially for a football game with just the number of people you have to be ready to talk about. And uh, all year long, we really, start in it, the internet makes it a lot easier than it used to be but you can get online and check out uh, I mean, I'm keeping track of what's going on at East Carolina mm -hmm. and their newspaper and at Tulane and everywhere else that's just an ongoing process through the season and you make a little note here and there if that's interesting come broadcast time I want might want to bring that up it's kind of a full week process to get everything together put together some charts uh, that you have that's kind of the crutch that you, you fill out basic information do it the same way every week so you can hurry up and find that information out whenever you need it. Well, Steve, again, you are outstanding at what you do, so I, I would feel that we would miss something if I don't ask you to do a little play-by-play -play for us here tonight. Play-by-play play Would here. you up right. for it? Why not? All right. All right, uh, we're on 3rd Avenue Live as Up Late Crew members attempt to cross this busy road. Hello, I'm Steve Cotton, along with me is Jamie Lafiego, and we are looking forward to Up Late's first street crossing challenge. That's right, Steve. Up first is Alex. Now, he's a sophomore and a camera operator here with Up Late. 
Looks like he's getting ready to cross over right now, and you see the normal handshake there, letting the cars know he's getting ready to cross. Yeah, not much action yet. Uh, that typical wave, letting them know he wants to get across there. Little tentative, fix the spot, and a successful game of frog. There we go. He's across the street. Next, looks like we got Patrick Webb. Now, Patrick's our floor manager. What do you think about Patrick? Well, Patrick looks like he's ready to go, anticipates a good crossing. Knows that he has to be on top of his game. It's a busy day along the. What about the crotch? Wait a minute! I thought he was going to take off, and he walks across the street. The booze nice in the lame. Oh, ball! But he busts loose with the whirling dervish move and uh, makes it across safely. And he joins Alex right there. Let's see. Up next, we have Julia. She's also running camera now. She's a freshman here with us. Be easy on her. Looks like she looks left, right, and left again, like you've been taught. But you don't need to do that on a one-way street, it's right? It's a one-way street. Uh, Julia, freshman. Yeah, she is a freshman. Julia will learn as uh, she goes on through her college career. We hope. <laughs> and there. She goes crossing and making it safe with the other side. Looks like we got Vanessa getting ready to cross. She's back in the control and time in the show. Vanessa, very timid, it looks like. Yeah, kind of tentative. You don't want to uh, go about it that way. Oh, it's, that's asking for trouble right there. Halfway across. Oh, not good, good acceleration. Nice final burst. Then she did make it okay. And what do you think of the smile? That's a million dollar smile to finish it up. Steve, thank you very much. Hey, Steve Cotton, right. everyone. We'll be right back with music from Adam Smash.